In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Now we shall raise our palms and then we shall have the palms blazed. Almighty, ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Now we will listen to the words of the gospel as we prepare for the procession. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. We are reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village opposite um, where on entering you will find a cold tide on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it as he had told them, and as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, 
the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jerusalem, and throwing their garments on the colt, they set Jesus upon it. And as he rode along, they spread their garment on the road. As he was now drawing near, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if this were silent, the very stones would cry out. The Gospel of our Lord. Today, we are presented with a situation where Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. Something very important about today's journey and the, the message that we get right from the outside before we go to church is the message communicated by the palms. Long time ago, the palms were supposed to be signs of freedom. In the history of the church, there was a picture that at some point would find itself in a coin that had the palm with a, a footstep on it, stepping on it, that would have communicated that uh, your freedom is curtailed. Now, for people to demand their freedom, twigs or the branches and swing them and demand freedom. That is before the time of Jesus. Now you understand why in most countries, if not all of them, when people are protesting, they'll take twigs or the branches and then they'll shout whatever they can shout in their countries. There is the connection between what used to happen and the origin of uh, swinging the branches to demand for freedom. But then later, as spirituality developed, the palms took another meaning. Now the protest was not about the government. The protest was about the individual. It was a communication. Holding a palm like that, it is first and foremost a statement that I am a sinner. On Ash Wednesday, we were reminded that uh, believe, uh, um, um, repent and believe in the gospel. And we also reminded that uh, we were ashes and to the ashes you, you return. So we started a journey. And then we said, we are taking a 40 days journey in which case we are going to do self-cleansing. We want to say that I've been, an, I've been doing this and the other one. So I need to be cleansed. I want to become a new person. So on Ash Wednesday, we accused ourselves of what it is we would want. By the time we are over these 40 days, we'll have overcome in terms of our development and growth. Now, today, we now take a bold step of telling the world that, yes, I am a sinner. And uh, who are we protesting to? We are telling God something about ourselves. And then we've seen Hosanna. 
Hosanna, Hosanna Jew, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna is not an English word. The root of the word Hosanna means in English. It's uh, a, a, a message of deliverance. It says, save me now, save me now. Every time we swing the branches and sing Hosanna, we are saying, from my sinfulness, save me, O Lord. From my sinfulness, save me, O Lord. And that is why, at the end of it all, we will be reminded that when the Mass is over and when we go home, we will need to put the, the branches or our palms at a very strategic point, as, as possible in our living rooms, where upon entrance, we will be seeing our sign of repentance. I did tell God that I want to overcome this, as we have always said that each one of us has their own inner disability. It could be my pride. It could be my insensitivity. It could be my arrogance. It could be my judgmental nature. It could be my sense of entitlement. It could be my spirit of self-sufficiency. It may be one of those or many, many others. And that is why I was telling God, save me now from my pride and arrogance, from my love of hatred and discord and division, all those things, such that this journey becomes of importance and benefit to me as an individual. At the end of the day, we'll be reminded that it is about me. Uh, last Sunday, yeah, last Sunday we, ce we celebrated, uh, we read the, the gospel of uh, the Adtharas woman. And one of the lessons that we learned is that um, when the stone throwers were thrown in disarray, all of them fizzled. And who was left? The woman and Jesus. And we are told that the lesson is, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, it will be me and my Savior. That is the message we are, we are, we are being reminded today. It is me and my Savior. Constantly going to him for cleansing and deliverance. What a soul yearns and longs for is to be with the Lord in eternity. And therefore today, it is not just um, a procession to the church. It is a reminder of our eternal procession to the beatific vision. So every day is a day of saying to God, save me now. This is my disability. I bring it to you because we are on a journey of self-constant inner renewal that we do every other day. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves for this journey. And this is not just a journey of today, Palm Sunday. It is a journey that prepares us for the eternal pilgrimage that will be taking up until that day will be able to be uh, before the seat of mercy. Today, it's granted that after the Passion, we can have a short homily. So I will deliver a short homily, less than five hours, but a short one. Today, as we have said, and as we said up there, the church celebrates the entry of Christ into Jerusalem in order to accomplish his Paschal mystery. This Sunday is called Palm or Passion Sunday. While Palm Sunday signifies royalty and triumph, Passion Sunday signifies both suffering and love. By freely going to Jerusalem, Christ demonstrates his humility and willingness to save us. On this day, the Christian community begins to reenact 
a very important phase of the Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ. We reenact the triumphant entry of Christ into Jerusalem as well as his passion. Hence, today's celebration reminds us of the dual nature of our Christian lives and our journey. What does the dual nature of our life or of our Christian life mean? It means that we are celebrated today and persecuted tomorrow. Today, we are quite loved, while the next day, we are bitterly hated. Today, we are passionately praised. And tomorrow, again, we are castigated. So the question is, does the congregation change? Does the people change? They do not change. The same persons that praised us will be the same that will castigate us. Those that sang and danced for us will be the same that will be shouting what we'll be able to hear later. A very important lesson that we must learn from all these is that as life unfolds, it presents us with different dimensions. You may be able to look at the faces of your life and see how you are treated at some point. The same people who sing our praise in good times might be, if not must, or if not always will be, but might be the same people to castigate us in the future. The same who are in the congregation that sang our praises will be the same will be in the congregation when we will be castigated. Today, the same people applauding Christ by singing Hosanna to the son of David might equally be the same people who will shout on Good Friday, crucify him, crucify him. This is the mystery of and the dialectics of life. The mystery and the dialectics of life. Praise, Hosanna, and crucify. A shift from Hosanna to crucify between Hosanna and crucify is only six days. That tells us uh, how, how life can change almost dramatically. That could be one of the lessons that we take home today. It is a mystery because at times, undertaking it is beyond our imagination. It is dialectical because these two aspects of life help us to understand who we truly are and what we mean to people. And that is why it is not, and we have said this in the past, it is not right to imagine that everybody who tells you that they love you, that they do. It is not, it is not advisable to celebrate that everybody loves you. In fact, it will be almost sinful to imagine that everybody loves you. And again, it will also, also be very hilarious to want to kill yourself because you have realized that you are not loved. Uh, a young man told me the other day that, Father, I want to commit suicide. And I asked him, why do you want to commit suicide? Because I have realized my dad does not love me. We will come across those situations, but we need, as we had last week in one of the devotions, we must learn through faith and our tenacity in believing in God, we must learn to depersonalize understanding people that today they are like this, tomorrow the same. 
look at ourselves even. Sometimes we are happy, other times we are not. The same person, the same heart. The same person and the same heart. A look at today's reading portrays the humility with which Christ approached these situations. One of the writers said that uh, today's the theme that outstands in all the readings is humility. Right from Christ at up to the cult. And a reminder that it will not be about them, it will be about us. And who, as we had last Sunday, whom we will be left with when everybody has left. Our first reading is taken from one of the, what we call the Ebed Yahweh songs. Ebed Yahweh in English means the suffering servant of Yahweh. Those songs in the book of prophet Isaiah. Christ is prefigured in this song as the suffering servant. Also in Paul's letter to the Philippians, we see humility at its best. They would read humility at its apogee. This is the kenosis or self-emptying of Christ. This is what Paul writes. Though he was in the form of man, he did not regard equality with God. Our gospel today is on the last supper of Christ with his disciples. At the last supper, Christ humbled himself by serving his disciples and eating at the same table with the man who was to betray him. This is what the evangelist tells us. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on table. On that I was asking, suppose eh, we have had people who engineer or who scheme the death of others. We have had people who we lure someone to their death. Somebody who comes as a friend. Suppose you know that so and so is the person who will eventually be the reason why you will die. How would you behave at table with somebody who is working so hard to kill you and knowing that today, uh, today is Sunday, uh, you will be killed on Thursday next week. And the person who will uh, pull the trigger if it will be shooting, is just here, and I shall come here, Makodofia. You know, but Jesus teaches us one thing, that in all this, the lesson for us today is that humility is very important in all circumstances of life. This includes both at a good and at a bad times. At a good times, humility. At a bad times, humility. Because that is the dual nature of our lives. Sometimes things are okay. Other times they are not okay. Christ was very strong. But he humbly became weak for our salvation. He taught us that true power lies in sacrifice and service. True power. The power that can be celebrated lies in sacrifice and in service. Where all of us are called to be able to, uh, to portray. He also taught us that humility is one of the most important virtues we need for our service admission. And especially for us who are men and women religious. 
We will need this most of the times because we will go through some very difficult situations. Each one of us is called to a mission. And remember, it is you who is the carrier of the banner. The other person may not be having the conviction you have as a Christian. The other person may not be having the conviction you have as, um, as a religious. The other person may not be having the conviction you have as a Christian. And therefore, because you are the carrier of the banner, it is your duty to make sure that the flame is still burning. For that to happen, we will need this mother of all virtues, that is humility. Having heard that, what is it that we can say that uh, today's celebration teaches us, amongst others? Amongst others, the following is something that we can take home. One is a message of assurance. Fear not, your king is coming. The prophet and John and others in their tellings of this event are trying to tell us something about Jesus that takes away our fear. The Pharisees are terrified. The Romans fear for their power. But to us comes a message of fear not. It doesn't matter what we are going through, but fear not. It doesn't matter how condemned we have been, but fear not. From the message of last Sunday, is it last Sunday? Yes. It doesn't matter how many people are throwing stones. Because in life, we will come across stone throwers who will be wishing us death. Remember, when they come with a message of death, Jesus reminds them that he is life. And the condemnation is lifted. And I love that. That is why we are saying today, fear not. He who is coming is coming even to lift the condemnation that we have gone through. To calm the crowds that are being for your blood. Message number two. Like the cult, we need to be accessible to the Lord so that he can use us. The cult was accessible. Remember, the persons who went for it were foreigners. They were not from that village. We need to be at the right place and there at the right time. For God to use us, we need to be at the right place and always at the right time. We need to be where the Lord is moving use so that he can use us. Where is the Lord moving use? It is this place. We move there so that we can be used. You may have seen, I, I like using the... the um, the example of road builders or contractors, if you like. Whenever there is a road under construction, you may have seen uh, various traders, hoteliers, and um, people who do um, guest, guest houses, and people who, various of, uh, who sells all forms of, of merchandise, what do they do? They move their business where the action will be. We need to, to move our business where there is the action. Why? So that they, we can be used. We can be of use to the Lord. God is use, you moving the use to this place. We must be available there. That is why whenever there is road under construction, kiosks mushroom from nowhere. Traders know how to move their businesses so that they can be of use to the builders. Now that, that analogy is what we are being taught today, that we move ourselves where God can use us. 
There are times, dear good people, that we will be tied up. We, when we are tied up, in a way that we cannot move to be used, we are told it is only the Lord who can come to lose us. When we are tied up, he, lose, he loses up so that he can use us. So being tied up is not an excuse. But we take ourselves to him. And we can be tied up by so many things. Number one, we can be tied up by our sin. We can be tied up by our sense of self-righteousness. We can be tied up by our arrogance. We can be tied up in unrighteousness. We can be tied up in lies and deceit. We can be tied up by the spirit of character as a nation. Whatever it is that is tying us up, we must ask the Lord to come and lose us so that he can use us. Those of us who are tied up, we have no excuse to go to the Lord for, his, for him to use us. Lesson number three. Again, like the cult, we need to be available for the Lord to use us. In number two, we talked about being accessible. Being accessible is not enough. Being accessible means that uh, somebody may call you, Sister, where are you? I am in my room. What are you doing? I'm drinking water and praying the rosary. What else are you doing? Reading the Bible. Can I send you somewhere? No, I am sick. Allah. The Pharaoh is accessible, but not available. So, we are saying eh, that eh, by being available, what do we mean? That is, able to be used or obtained at someone's disposal. What about accessibility? Accessibility, accessibility is being at the right place and at the right time. Availability is being willing to be used once you are accessed. Now get the difference. So we need both. In life, we will be accessed. We will be available. And sometimes we use all manner of excuses. Other times, we are not even accessible, let alone available. I know you have ever had. Um, sometimes last week, I had a story that I was told that... Uh, uh, Father, my mom, a, a, a lady told me that Father, my mom got lost and she left a suicide note. And she left the home and switched off her phone. Now, that is somebody who is inaccessible and by all standards unavailable for any use. So, and you have had and I have heard this. No, I will go and switch off my phone. They can't get me. Allah. In this world, and those of you who are young, one day you'll hear that. Some of you look like suspects. <laughs> to go and switch off your phone because for the sake of can't get me. Caesar cannot get me. Bishop cannot get me. Whoever cannot get me. Even my mom cannot get me. My sister can't get me. Nobody will get me. You know, all those things. Once we are where we are supposed to be, then we, we, need to be, we need to be willing for the Lord to use us. Lesson number four. We need to be accommodating so that the Lord can use us. For the Lord to use us, we must be accommodating. Many things will happen that may not be able to favor our situations, even our culture. But we must be very accommodating. Even as we go out for the ministry and whatever it is that we are doing, we must be very accommodating. It cannot be true that we can only be helped at our own convenience. No, it's not possible. Um, as a therapist, I hear so many times people request me that, Father Kaye, could you come and talk to us? Uh, Why do I come to talk to you? Uh, I told them that I have my office and the, I am available uh, for the office this and this day and these hours. And then somebody would also say that, uh, uh, could you kindly come and talk to us in our home? 
Sometimes we want to be assisted. But we don't want to get out of our convenience. We don't want to get out of our comfort zone. So we want to be assisted and at our own convenience. Being accommodating means that sometimes, if not always, we will go out of our comfort zones for the Lord to be able to use us. Lesson number five. Your internal identity is more important than the image. Our internal identity is more important than the image that we said out there. Greatness, good people, Greatness does not come from the image you present to the world. I was listening to the history of Congo. Maybe I can ask you to go to the YouTube and uh, listen to that. Eh? There is these two gentlemen. There is Lumumba and there is Mobutu. Lumumba was the head of state. And one of his most trusted soldier was Mobutu. Uh, Lumumba was more or less aligned to the East. Uh, Mobutu more to the West. When things were getting thick, Lumumba is said to have cast his gaze on Russia. While uh, Mobutu uh, was sympathetic to the West. If I say to the West, read America. So what happens is that the person who had shown everybody as the savior, the good person, that is Mobutu. Because later Mobutu... Uh, engineered the death of his boss. And his boss was captured, and he was tortured to death. In fact, between his capture and death was a short moment. And um, all that happened uh, under the supervision of the most trusted soldier. Now, the person that everybody thought was a savior, became the reason why so many people died, so many killed, so many persecuted. The, the image portrayed to the world was so wrong because the internal identity was of a dictator, a murderer, a genocide schemer. Greatness comes from who you are, not what you have. Greatness comes from the way you have ordered your inner man, not by how you clothe the outer man. Uh -huh. You do not need the world's trappings to be a great man or a great woman in God's eyes. You don't need the world's money to be great. The world's uh, silver and gold to be great. The internal disposition. That is what the Lord is interested in. Lesson number six. Our obedience is not connected to our popularity. Then they learned that a servant lives and dies for others, the central message. And finally, lesson number seven. Anyone can have their fortunes and their lives change dramatically overnight. What we need to know is that the Lord will keep his promise always. Our lives can change. People surrounding us can change. Status can change. The Lord will never change. His promise will never change. If only we can be available for his use, accessible for his use, 
and humble enough for the mission. May the Lord help all of us to be able to be men and women he can use for the salvation of souls and glorification of his own name. May all those of us who are tied up have the strength and the audacity of calling upon the Lord to come and lose them so that they can be used. All of us has a share. We have something that we can do for building the kingdom. All of us can be used by the Lord. We are all candidates. Let's not be left behind. Let's be available. Let us be accessible. Let us be obedient and humble enough to not only listen to the voice, but follow his directives. When we get the direction, we can also be able to bring others to him for use. May the Almighty God bless all of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.